What's the deal with Mastodon? All that and more this time on Hack 5. Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Hack 5. I am Shannon Morris and this is your weekly dose of Technolust. You will notice that there is no Darren Kitchen here. Again, I am co-host less. <laughs> He's still on his hack across the planet trip. I don't know which country he's in right now. He's been traveling around a lot. I believe last week he was in Australia and he did an Australian meetup over in Sydney. So that was super cool. Let me know if you guys were able to join in on that and let me know how it went and it, how drunk Darren got because I'm, I'm indeed very curious. But this week I am taking on another segment all on my own. I wanted to talk about something else that you guys might be interested in because it's been getting a lot of news. So let's talk about social networks. Works. Again, yes, we have talked about this before on Hack 5. We did a segment way back in season 18. It was ep episode 1811, I believe, specifically. Uh, we were discussing Friendica, which was a distributed decentralized social network alternative to Facebook. Uh, it's kind of long formatted, but check out that episode if you've never used a decentralized social network so you can kind of get the gist of it. Basically, a decentralized social network means that it's not just run on one company server under one company's rule, you know, one ring to rule them all. But with a decentralized distributed network, anybody can run an instance on their own server. And hopefully they are interoperable with each other so that you can chat with folks on other instances, uh, unless it's some kind of closed environment for some reason. Maybe it's a closed club or something like that. But in this case, it would be an open format. So today I am checking out Mastodon. Yes, mastodon.social to be exact. Uh, this is a new social network scene because it's an alternative to Twitter and everybody is really excited about it. So I was just like, I was like, why? Why are you guys so stoked about this? So I decided I would check it out because not only is it free, but it's also open source. Their source code is actually available over on GitHub. So you can totally check it out for yourself. And here's their open source information along with a very nice little uh, detailed explanation of what Mastodon is in case you want to set up your own instance. And if you do, let me know. We haven't set up a Hack5 instance yet, but it might be in our future. So let me know if you guys want us to create an instance. So why would you use this exactly? Well, timelines are chronological. It's not like Instagram where you get whatever is the most popular, or whatever likes that they assume that you're going to put in based on your algorithm and there's no ads or anything like that. You can use up to 500 characters per post as opposed to Twitter, which is only 140. They also accept videos and GIFs or GIFs, depending on who you are. Both of those work in the timeline. You can also choose the privacy settings per post instead of per profile. I think this is really cool if I just want to post something just for my followers. I don't have to make my whole profile private, which is what you would have to do on Twitter. So I could make one post private and the rest of them would be public for anybody. There's also no ads like I mentioned previously and the API is totally open so you can make your own instance. There's even a ton of apps already available for mobile. I'll have a little bit more on that in a bit as well as my explanation on why I have not downloaded one of those yet. So choosing an instance, this is kind of complicated. There's a lot of instances that you can choose from. It's slightly time consuming because you have uh, several options. So if you were to go through all of these and kind of pick out which club you want to be a part of, it would take you all day. So <laughs> luckily you can sort this list depending on your preferences. Like you can sort it by, do they have HTTPS turned on and are they graded for that well? And so on and so forth. So you can choose one like that. Several of the ones that I clicked on here weren't in a language that I could read as far as their explanations. Like there are a lot of French ones in here. Here's one, here's another one. Uh, so I didn't choose those. I just ended up going with an English one and then I ended up choosing mastodon.network. So that was easy enough for me. And wow, BBC, you are just flooding my timeline. Thank you so much for that flood of information. Really appreciate it. So with this, I also made sure to choose one that is HTTPS. 
books because that is very important to me and it was somewhat popular so I could get kind of a quick idea of how it works. So if you are curious, I decided to test out Mastodon.network for this episode. The nice thing about Mastodon instances is that they are federated, which means that whichever instance you want to sign up on, you're going to be able to follow and read tweets from other instances, including the main one. Now keep in mind, whenever you sign up, you have to verify your email. So I used my public work email because I wasn't so sure about what I'm signing up for here. Just like any other thing that you're just now signing up for, you're putting some inherent trust in that company to take care of your email and not sell it. Now looking over their terms of service, they say that they're not going to sell anything, any of your data. They do log IP addresses though, so it might be beneficial to use a VPN while using Mastodon, so keep that in mind. Uh, one of the nice things that they do include other than HTTPS is two-factor authentication. So that's available via a QR code just scanned into your app of choice, whether it's Authy or Google Authenticator or whatever you might choose. So in the web browser, the <laughs> well, the timeline looks a lot like TweetDeck, so I can definitely see where they got their idea from. So it's really easy to get a feel for it. You start out with a very clean slate. You don't have anything in your home browser because you're not following anything yet. Nobody's following you, so you won't see anything there. Uh, and then you can choose your local timeline, which is going to be just your instance, or you can go back and choose the federated timeline. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Federated is all instances, and the other one, local, is just your instance. You can also search for people above your own name, so you could go over here. So for example, I can search for Shannon Morse, because I'm logged in as Snubs, my other one. I definitely signed up for two. And then I can add myself right there. How handy is that? Now, if I want to log out or do anything like that, I can just click that button right there, and then I can log in with my account by clicking Log In, which is the small little button right there. All right, so now that I'm logged in under my Shannon Morse name, I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit more about how to use the service. So first off, uh, after searching for somebody and following a bunch of people, you probably want to start tweeting. Well, it turns out that in Mastodon, tweets are called toots, which honestly just sounds like a fart joke to me. So I don't know, have fun with tooting, I guess. So toot options. <laughs> I just, I can't say that with a straight face. It's so hard for me. I'm such an immature child. I'm such an immature child. Sorry, guys. All right, so moving on, <laughs> we're going to do some toots. So for example, you have a whole bunch of options here. So I can set up a content warning if I want to toot something that is uh, for adults only. <laughs> I can also toot something publicly or unlisted, private or direct. So this is the thing I was talking about earlier where you can switch it on a tweet basis. I'm going to just say tweet because it's way easier for me. And I can also upload media here. So I can just cl click on that and upload uh, videos, GIFs, GIFs, or photos. So another thing that I wanted to mention is you can add emojis with that little button right there, which is super cute. And all of them work very similarly to like Slack or any other interface that you use where it just gives you uh, basically a, just a word in the middle of a couple of colons. Another thing you can do, which you don't necessarily see on mine since I already set up my account is you can set up desktop notifications and little sound pop-ups whenever you sign up. Now, if you do want to uh, turn off the sounds or turn off desktop notifications, you can do all that through your settings, which is found through your profile. Now, your profile is found at a very, very strange little link, which looks like this. So if I click on my little header right here, not edit profile, but just my little image, it'll pull up my profile. And this is what my profile looks like. I've only tweeted a couple of times. And then this is what my profile number is. So it's 9180. And that gives me direct access to my profile. So if I want to tweet something, I can say recording hack five. And I'll put a little smiley face just because. Oh, I should put a pineapple. Yes, pineapples. And uh, there's my toot. So it shows up in the home. And it'll also show up on my profile if I click on my profile again. So there it is. 
So if you're using Mastodon and you want to find people, you have to log in and then find at Shannon Morse at Mastodon.network to follow me, for example. You can also search for me right above my name, look for at Shannon Morse, and then you can hit the little plus icon to actually friend me. So that would be my first problem with this. Unless someone knows your name, it's going to be really hard for them to find you on Mastodon because either you have to show up in their timeline somehow, either through the federated one or the local one, or you you have to know their profile link, which is a number and doesn't necessarily work. So you have to know their name, I guess. Also, people on other instances can use the same name as you, and there is no way to report them for being a poser or anything like that, at least not that I can tell. So that would be a problem for me. As far as banning goes, they don't accept neo-Nazis, racism, sexism, and excessive advertising. So those are all banned from Mastodon. So it sounds like they're trying to be very anti-company, anti-establishment like type format there. Uh, you can report tweets, though. So if somebody tweets something that you seem you think is against their terms and policies, so let's say uh, maybe somebody had a problem with me recording Hack Five. Oh, never mind. I can't report my own tweet. Okay, so BBC, you're my target. I'm going to report BBC, and then it'll give me an option based on all the different tweets that they have done lately, and then I can just hit submit. Uh, that's about it for reporting. So it's actually pretty easy to do so. Another thing you can do is you can reply to their tweet, you can favorite it or retweet it. So this would be called boosting in Mastodon, and you can also favorite it. So this will actually add it to your favorites list. Now here's another problem that I noticed while I was using Mastodon. You can't actually delete your account. So far what I've seen, at least at time of recording, is that they don't have an option through your settings to delete your account. And if you email them, they can't really delete it either because of all the different instances that your tweets will appear on. So it doesn't seem like an option to delete it. So once you have one set up, at least right now, it's set up for good. Now, Mastodon is currently being supported just through a Patreon account, and luckily they're making a little bit of money on it, so that's awesome. So support them if you want to. You don't have to. I'm not you know, paid to do this or anything. So Gargron is creating open source software, and this is the guy that actually created Mastodon. And he's been doing a lot of development on it, and he's just being supported through their PayPal and a Bitcoin address for the creator, along with there's a bunch of volunteers who are doing their own work. They're moderating, they're setting up instances and stuff like that. Now, if you want to set up your own instance with the source code, all you have to do is go pull it from their web page. And we did do a recent episode about how to work Work with GitHub, so definitely check that out if you never have. Of course, that had to do with the Bash Bunny, not necessarily pulling uh, a bunch of dev code from GitHub to do your own instance, but it's similar in that way. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is apps. So I mentioned this previously. There's currently a few apps in development, which you can see on the GitHub listing, um, but I'm not super comfortable with downloading any of them on my phone till they are confirmed, they're A-OK, -okay, and they are full released products. There is one here called Tutti Fruity, which is on Google Play, so that's a little bit more comforting, but yet this is unreleased and there haven't been any reviews or, of it or anything like that. So I'm gonna wait until I download one of these. In the meantime, I've just been using it in the browser, uh, on my Brave browser on my phone till then. So you can set up notifications on your phone through the browser. So that's not a big loss there. I just leave it on in, a, in one of my tabs. But it will be nice once an app is finally released on the Play Store and there is one on iOS, so if you've checked that out, let me know. Lastly, there is also a Twitter cross poster. So you can use some Python code and simply set up a little cross poster if you want to post as well over to Twitter from your Mastodon account. This just requires a little bit of Python code and then you have to hack it together, of course. <laughs> They do have information pertaining to Docker as well. So if you use the Docker uh, software, you can update it and use this through the Docker app, which is pretty cool uh, and seems pretty easy to do. I have not done this yet. Let me know if you have used this and if it works.
So my biggest question to you is, do you think Mastodon is going to live for very long? Because there are so many social networks that come onto the scene, and when it comes to decentralized and distributed social networks, there's not many, but it seems like there's just a very core audience that uses those kind of things. This is the first time that I've seen a decentralized social network that looks good, and it works in the browser, and it works very well. And yes, I am aware of GNU Social, and I'm aware of of you know, Diaspora and the friend to cuss servers and th stuff like that. So I've checked out very many of them. So, so far, Mastodon's my favorite. I do like the idea of free and open source Twitter alternatives, especially since Twitter seems to be full of ads these days. So it's not necessarily my favorite place to be. I'm just not sure yet if this is going to catch on or if it's just going to die like every other social network that has attempted to come onto the scene and take over and just hasn't been able to do it. Alternatively, as the outsiders ourselves, do we want this to catch on or do we want to keep it to ourselves? So I apologize in advance for doing a segment about this because I'm sure it's going to draw in many more people, but I don't know. like. Do we want it to catch on or do we want it to just be our thing? So let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'm going to be right back after this break. If you've got a great idea, bring it onto the internets the way Darren and I do using Domain.com. With an awesome domain discovery system and a quick and easy checkout process, you will have your perfect website up and running in minutes. And the guys over at Domain.com, they're huge Hack5 fans and they want to hook you up with the coupon code HJK5 for 20% off. And as usual, make sure to send them a tweet at Domain.com and let them know how much you really appreciate them for supporting Hack5. I know I do every single day. So remember, when you think domains, think domain.com. All right, that about wraps up Mastodon on this episode of Hack 5. But of course, Darren's going to be back next week with another episode. You can definitely look forward to that in all of his travels. I'm sure he's going to have another awesome vlog for us. Check out hackacrosstheplanet.com for all the meetup updates. Darren did just have a meetup in Sydney, so make sure to sign up for all of his future ones because he's going to have plenty before he's back here in the studio. Also, I wanted to remind you guys, I'm going to be down in Australia at Aussert next month in the Gold Coast Australia, which I believe is a city in Queensland? I don't know. America, we don't really learn that much about Australia and the different cities and where they all are, so I have to look everything up on the internets these days. But at least I do my research. I think it's Queensland. So let me know if I got that wrong. Feedback at hack5.org is where you can email us and let us know what you want us to review on future episodes or what kind of hacks you want to see on the show because we're always looking for cool segments to show you guys. And hackshop.com, that's hakshop.com, is where you can support us directly. And we really appreciate everybody who checks out the site and just, you know, browses the store and finds cool things that they want to check out. Hack5.org slash follow is where you can find out what we are doing. And I think that's about it. So with that, I'm going to say, trust your technolast. I'll see you next week. Bye.